Hi, my name's Craig, I'm from Ben Standard, and today we're looking at the Milescraft sign making kits. There are two kits available in the Milescraft range, the Sign Crafter and the Sign Pro. The only difference between these two kits is in the templates that you get in the box, with the Sign Pro coming with a larger range of templates. For the time being, we're going to set the Sign Crafter aside and see what we get in the Sign Pro kit. I've unpacked the Sign Pro box, and what you see here is everything that you get in both the Sign Crafter and the Sign Pro. So what's included is a universal terminal base plate, your centering pin, a 5 8 guide bushing and a 3 8 core box bit to work with your 2.5 inch letter sets. You also get 4 18 inch metal rails so you can make signs that are either 18 or 36 inches long, your two rail joiners, two workpiece supports, your two end frames and the two clamps to hold your end frames onto your workpiece. You also get the instructional DVD. Now, both the Sign Crafter and the Sign Pro come with two 2.5 inch letter and number sets. The reason it comes with two sets is because most words have two of the same letter in most words. So you can pick the letters out of these two sets to make up most words. Now, what's included in the Sign Pro but is not included in the Sign Crafter is the vertical number sets. So you can put vertical numbers under letterbox and other posts. You also get two 1.5 inch letter and number sets and you get the smaller guide bushing and the smaller router bit to be able to suit these smaller letter and number sets. So just to recap, everything that you see here is available in the Sign Pro. What's not included in the Sign Crafter is the one and a half inch letter and number sets, the vertical number sets, the guide bushing and the smaller router bit to suit these smaller numbers. The first thing you need to do is to install the universal turn lock base plate onto the base of your router. To do this, take the plastic base that normally comes with the router off, pick up your centering pin and put it into the collet of your router. Tighten it by hand. Then release the base of your router so that it sits slightly above the centre section of the centering pin. You can see there's a series of holes and slots in the bottom of the base plate. You need to line these up with the screw holes in the bottom of your router. Once you've done that, you just need to loosely tighten the screws to hold the base plate in place. The reason you need to do it lightly is so that when you align the base plate, there's still some movement. Once you've screwed the base plate into position, take your 5 8 guide bushing, put it over the centering pin and into the base plate, turn to lock. Once you've done that, you then need to lower the base of the router onto the centering pin. When you're lowering the guide bushing over the centering pin, the template guide engages with the centering pin and will perfectly align the base plate and the template guide over the centre of your collet. Once it's engaged, you simply tighten up the three screws and then you're ready to go. The next job is to assemble your template frame. Today we're going to make an entrance sign. To make up your template frame, take one of the end frames and one of the rails Slide it into the end frame and do up the screw. Once this is done, you need to put on one of the workpiece supports. Just pick up the workpiece support, clip it on, and slide it down to the end of to the end frame. Now you need to load your letters into the rails. Take your first letter, clip it into the rail, and slide it along all the way to the end. Repeat that with all your letters. Now you can see here that we're running out of space on the first set of rails. All we need to do is we need to get the second set of rails and join it to the first. To do this, get the joiner, slide it onto the rail and tighten up the screw. Then take it, slide it onto your first rail and tighten up the second screw into position. Do that with your second rail and joiner. Once you've loaded all of your letters into the rails and you've put on your two workpiece supports, you then need to fill up the space on the second rail before you can put your second end frame on. What I do is I use a lot of random characters to fill up this space so I don't get confused between the word that I'm routing and the space that I'm trying to fill up. Once you've filled up both of the rails, Take the second end frame and put it onto the end of the template frame. 
Do up both screws. Now you'll see here that there's a gap between the last letter and the end frame. To close up that gap, you undo this screw and slide this clamp into position. What this does is it makes sure that none of your templates will move when you're routing. Once you've done this, you're now ready to clamp your template frame onto your workpiece. My entrance sign is going onto a piece of 19mm pine. You always need to make sure that the workpiece that you're routing onto is longer than the template frame. All you do is get your timber, lay the template frame onto the, onto the timber, make sure it's aligned correctly, and then get the included end frame clamps and clamp it into position. Now that your workpiece is in position to start routing, one of the issues that you're going to have is that it can move around when you're actually routing. You're going to need to secure it in place. One of the ways of doing this is by using the Milescraft tri-groups. The tri-groups are a triangular shaped pad with a non-slip mat on three sides and an internal ballast. So it doesn't matter which way you put them, the ballast will always flow to the correct direction and will provide more stability. All you need to do with the tri-groups is just put them under each corner of your, temp of your workpiece. Now once you've done this, you'll see that there's virtually no movement in your workpiece, so you can now start routing. Check you're happy with your first letter, and once you've finished the first one, move on to the next one. Now you can see here that your support can sometimes get in the way, so simply slide it back out of the way and keep working. And there you have your raw routed sign. To finish off our entrance sign, all we've done is docked the timber to length, rounded over the corners and painted the, uh, the letters in black to make them stand out a little bit better. So let's just recap the two Miles Craft sign making kits. You've got the sign crafter, which includes everything that you need to be able to make signs with two and a half inch letters and numbers. And then you've got the sign pro, which has got everything that you need to make signs with both one and a half and two and a half inch characters. The only thing the Milescraft kits don't include is a way of fixing your workpiece down to your workbench. They've got these awesome tri-groups which you'll find really handy to use when routing your sign and also a range of other uses in your workshop and around the house. So there you have it, the Milescraft sign making kits. Great value for money.